Hey there, fellow podcasters. I'm Dan Benjamin and welcome to the channel. Today, I've got a video for you where we are going to be talking about how I record podcasts. A lot of people have written in and said, Dan, the shows you do sound pretty good. When I record with my guest over Skype, it doesn't sound as good or whatever technology you're using. How can I make that sound better? And that's what I'm going to be telling you about today using a little technique that's been around in the industry for ages. It's called a double ender. And what that means is that both people on the podcast, or if you have more than two, everybody would record their own end of the podcast. Then they ship all of those files up to the editor, which is usually you, right? And you combine them. The problem with that is everybody's computer is a little bit different when they hit start is a little bit different and lining those up can be a little bit tricky. The software that I use to record all the shows that I do is a really great piece of software by uh, Rogue Amoeba, a fun company, and it's Mac software. There are equivalents for the PC. I'll put those down in the show notes for you to see both the link to uh, Rogue Amoeba's amazing audio hijack as well as the Windows equivalent or as close as I can get to that. The reason that I use that software is it allows me to record from multiple sources at the same time. So I can record from my microphone, I can record from Skype, I can record all of these different inputs coming into the computer, and then I can export them in whatever file format I want and use those to edit. But wait a second, that doesn't explain the double ender part, the part where the other people have recorded their end. And this is where the magic happens. So in this example, I'm actually going to show you the screen and how I set all of this up uh, for what I recorded earlier today, an episode of Back to Work, a show I do with Merlin Mann. We've been doing for many years. We're almost at 500 episodes, and I've been recording it almost the same way this whole time. Uh, the beautiful thing about me recording his version of the conversation, in other words, what he's sending me over Skype, means that I can use that local recording that I have to line up the recorded audio that he sends me. And that's the key right there. I'm not ever using the audio that I record of his end because it's over Skype. It doesn't sound as good. I'm going to use the audio he sends me, which is just his own local computer that he is recording with his local microphone. But in order to keep that synced up, to know where to stop it and start it, I need a guide. And so my local copy of Skype becomes that guide. Also, there's another thing that you need to pay attention to, and that's something called audio drift. And this is just the nature of the technology that we have. And that is every computer records the audio at just a slightly different speed. So even if you have two computers that came off the assembly line in the same day and you hit record on both of them, there's going to be a slight bit of audio drift. And that means that the audio isn't going to line up perfectly. You can fix that easily and visually if you have the locally recorded audio and their audio combined. You can look and see those waveforms and you can shift them a little bit right or a little bit left as you're editing to make sure that they stay lined up. So like I said, I'm actually going to show you my audio hijack screen and I do most of my editing in Logic. So I'll show you how that works in Logic uh, right here in a second. But before we do that, I would love it if you would take a minute to like and subscribe. Most important that you subscribe and ring the bell so that you know when I come out with a new video. It's still a new channel, really helps support the channel, and uh, it would be great if y'all could do that. Okay, let's get started. This is Audio Hijack, and this is my basic setup for recording. You can see here that I have set Skype as the input source so that I can record the incoming Skype call. In this case, it's Merlin Mann, my co-host on Back to Work. You can see that I've also selected fill playback gaps with silence. This just ensures that Audio Hijack doesn't change the audio, uh, eliminating pauses uh, so that it will match up perfectly with the recording that he's giving me in real time. For the recording format, I'm using 192 kbps mp3 because that's a good blend of high quality audio and a reasonable file size. You can change this, of course, you can use whatever you want, but there have been times where something has happened to the remote recording or my one of my co-hosts didn't record and I needed to use this file instead. Uh, so having it saved in at least this level of quality means I just don't have to worry about it. I'm using a sample rate of 48,000 hertz. And of course, I'm also recording the file in mono because the human voice is mono and there's no reason to use stereo. It just takes up extra space and you're gonna wind up mixing it down to mono anyway. 
So mono it is. I also have the audio from Skype being sent to my audio interface so that I can hear it. Now, depending on your own hardware and settings, this might or might not be necessary. But for me, with the audio device I use, the Universal Audio Arrow, it is needed so that I can hear my co-hosts and guests properly. I'm using the very same settings to record my own voice, by the way, directly from the audio interface, uh, which my Shure SM7 is plugged into. So there's no mystery there. Same settings. Okay, now we're ready to record. The first step is to hit the record button, obviously. This starts the audio tracks going, and I can now call Merlin over Skype. Hello. Oh, hi, Merlin. How are you today? I'm fine, Dan. How are you? I am doing pretty good. Pretty good. Can't uh, pretty complain. Good. Yeah. Feeling optimistic? I mean, it is the optimistic day, but um, sure, yeah, I'd say yes, I'm feeling super optimistic. How about you? All right, so the show gets recorded, and once we're done, I'll hit stop, and my co-host will upload his audio file someplace. We happen to use Dropbox, and I'll download the file. And then it's time to import the audio tracks into my audio editor of choice, which just happens to be Apple's Logic Pro 10. I do this by just dragging and dropping the audio tracks into the template I've created for the show. Once the tracks are imported, you'll be able to see the waveforms filling in. These are critical for lining up the audio track I've recorded and my co-host's audio track. I do this visually. As you can see, it's as easy as just finding the in point for the audio track my co-host sent me and matching it up with the track that I recorded locally. Sometimes it takes a little bit of fiddling to get it to align perfectly, but once it looks aligned, you can just hit play and you can verify by listening that the tracks are lined up and that there is no echo or reverb or anything like that. That means they're aligned just right. Now we can clean up the tracks, removing the initial call connection, and continue editing the show, listening for any of those echo or delay effects. If you hear any, you just zoom in, cut some of the empty space from the track, and realign the remote track so that it's perfect. And you can just verify that by looking and listening. Now we clean up the extra post-show audio, and all that's left is matching up the audio with the intro bumper and the outro music, and bouncing the file, and we're done. It really couldn't be faster or easier. And this is generally all that I need to do in order to edit and publish an episode, especially one that's essentially what we used to call live to tape, where we're not editing a lot for content. If you were editing for content, at this point, you can just delete that second track uh, that you recorded locally and just use the final published track and you're all set. And that does it. So I hope that explains how I record and edit. And hopefully this has been useful to you. If it is, one more time, like, subscribe, ring the bell. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I'll get in there and answer them for you. And if you have ideas for other videos that you want me to do, also let me know in the comments. I appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.